everyone and welcome to Biology Professor. Today we're talking about bacterial classification by shape. Basically, there are several different shapes that bacterial cells can take. These include a coccus shape, the plural of that is cocci, these are spherical bacteria. An example of a coccus type bacteria would be Staphylococcus aureus. There's also bacillus. These are rod shaped bacteria. The plural of this is bacilli. And they have these longer rod shaped structures. An example of a bacillus type bacterium is Bacillus anthracis, which causes anthrax. Next, there are spirillum shaped bacteria or spirilla these are sort of spiral shaped an example of a spirilla bacteria is treponema pallidum which causes syphilis there are also curved bacteria sometimes you'll also hear them referred to as comma shaped bacteria so as you can guess curved bacteria they're sort of curved, they look a little bit like a comma. An example of a curved bacterium would be Vibrio cholerae, which causes cholera. Then there are some bacteria that they have a shape that is somewhat between cocci and bacilli, so they're sort of spherical and sort of rod shaped. They look something like this. Now these top three are the most common types of bacteria, but of course you do see these shapes represented as well. Now, in addition to bacterial shape, there are ways to classify bacteria based on their organization into groups. So basically, how the different cocci cells or the different bacilli cells, how they actually clump together in groups. Over here, we're just going to use this top one, the cocci bacteria, as an example, but these are types of organizations that can be used by various other types of bacteria as well. So for example, with diplococcus, think diplo here, diplo means two. So these are when the two cocci are in pairs. So basically, they clump together in pairs, and this would be one way to recognize a diplococcus-type species under a microscope while you look for two spherical cells that are joined together. Staphylococcus, like Staphylococcus aureus, staphylo refers to grape-like clusters. So these are when the coccus cells are sort of in these clusters like this. And they can be identified under the microscope that way. Streptococcus has this root, strepto. It means in chains. So streptococcus bacteria, like streptococcus pyogenes that causes scarlet fever, it grows in long chains. Now, you might ask, why is this important? Well, it's important to know what bacteria look like and how they're organized into groups so that doctors or nurses or researchers, when they're looking at a bacterial specimen under the microscope, they can determine what type of bacteria it is. This is important because if it's a bacteria that's causing an infection, by identifying what kind of bacteria it is, that helps doctors know how to treat the infection. Of course, bacteria shape and organization in groups usually isn't enough. Often you need these two pieces of information as well as differential stain information. This means staining the bacterial cells on the microscope slide with something like the Gram stain or the acid fast stain to get more information about what kind of bacteria is causing the infection. 
If you'd like more information about the gram stain technique or the acid fast stain technique, you can see my separate videos that go into more detail on those procedures. So that's it for today, and thank you for watching Biology Professor.